Dang, homie, that's a nice ride. And that ride is a 1976 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Auto World. So through my research, it seems that the Cadillac de Ville line is quite long. It uh, started out in 1958. And originally, in, actually in 1949, it was considered a trim level. And then it became its own namesake. So anyhow, I, uh, you know, I bought a bunch of these lowriders here from Auto World. And uh, they're cool. I like them. Unfortunately, this theft, anti-theft packaging is a bit of a pain for us to watch. Okay, we got through the hard part. Nice to see this little extra box and blister for storage. But it is weird. I noticed on my other video after I tried to put it in this box, look at the blister. It's longer than the box. So if you actually want to store this car in the box, you can't really, you gotta trim the blister down in order to fit it. It just is not gonna fit. It's too long. So you gotta cut off this edge. It's kinda weird. You would think that maybe they would make a longer box. Maybe, right? Anyways. Okay, so this is supposed to be the fourth generation of the uh, DeVille series from Cadillac and it was available from 1971 to 1976. And uh, I guess at the time it held a world record for interior width. So it's a naturally a big vehicle, a land yacht, road yacht, whatever you want to call it. It also has hidden windshield wipers, so I'm not going to look for those on this, this model because they're not supposed to be visible. And then uh, there are a couple engine choices, 7.7 .7 liters or 8.2 liters. I mean, that's a massive engine, but of course this is a massive car. And the 1976, <coughs> excuse me, the 1976 model was supposed to have some sort of option, optional thing called Trackmaster, which would keep the rear wheels from walking up. So basically, it was like a computer uh, early version of ABS. So interesting. Okay, that's all I really found out about the 1976 uh, Coupe de Ville. I do think of always like the movie Goodfellas, which is uh, from the 1990, done by Martin Scorsese. Uh, the Coupe de Ville in that movie was a 1979 model though, so I, I would hope that Auto World does that model because this is a Gen 4 and I think the 1979 model is a Gen 5, so it would probably, you know, require a totally different casting that they could make money off of because, hey, it was in Goodfellas. I mean, most people probably have, well, I would assume a lot of people have seen that movie and liked it. Scorsese makes pretty good movies. All right, so anyways, wow, it's a it's definitely a big cat, big vehicle here. You know, it's the nice thing about a real 164 scale vehicle. You really get an idea of how big these things are in real life. And that is what this is. Uh, you know what, before I forget, let's pull it up next to some photos and see if it, uh, Auto World did a good job representing this. So. Actually, you gotta ignore the graphics because this is a lowrider, but um, you know, you got this rectangular headlights. Hmm. What's odd though is like, uh, you got these ribs here in the corners, but I, I, you know, it's not there. Maybe this is considered like a modification that lowriders had made to this vehicle. It's possible maybe Auto World borrowed someone's real lowrider and just copied exactly what they did you know because obviously the wheels are totally different so <laughs> so i don't know not sure why that would be different also the egg crate grill you know it's, it's not the same here it's more vertical ribbing and it's black obviously so hmm not not sure anyways it doesn't really bother me so much being a custom lowrider I don't expect it, I don't have to have it identical to a stock vehicle. Alright, so the back, uh, there we go. Yeah, it looks good enough to, for me. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay, so let's get back to a better light angle here. Let's start with the top view for this time around. So you got this metallic maroon. Unfortunately, it's not painted very nice. Like, uh, there's splotchiness here. Like, you can see, like, a splotchy. It's darker here, lighter here. Light, dark, light. It's like, I don't know what happened there. And it's a little bit on the back here as well. There's, like, some dark pools, light pools. The front hood seems okay. 
Um, what I'm suspecting is this paint might be translucent. I think it's actually like, it's not an opaque red. It's like a metallic clear coat. And so that roughness or weird color splotchiness is the casting itself underneath this clear paint. I might be totally wrong, but that's what I'm suspecting because I, I can't explain why it would look like that otherwise, unless this paint was clear. Okay. So yeah, it is, uh, it's definitely better here. Maybe it's just a matter of how thick that paint is. Maybe it's super thin up top, and then here it's super thick, so it looks more uniform. That's a possibility. These little custom stripes are pretty cool. They're really well done. They're symmetric. They're not crooked or anything. Not, well, all right, they're a little crooked. Uh, I can tell because the center ridge is tighter here, but here there's a big gap. So it wasn't printed 100% perfect. It's too bad. Okay, so naturally we have a white interior, which is nice because you can see a lot of cool detail in there. Let's see. All right, the steering wheel, the seat's got some sort of ribbing. And great, I like the fact that there's no side window because again, we can see a lot of the details on the inside. No extra color inside, but I think it's great for the price. Yeah, it's just nice to see other than black on a on a diecast model. You know, black really hides a lot of the molding, but this shows it all. It's cool, very cool. All right, so this top is like this one of those weird fake, fake convertible looks. You know, it's a hard top, but for some reason they put these things on. I think they're called Landau tops, where it's supposed to mimic a convertible. Seems weird. But anyways, uh, I guess Auto World did a decent job of it. They have to, they have some sort of badge there, probably like a Cadillac. Oh wow, it's really well printed. That's really well done. I mean, look at all the different colors and stuff like that. The little blocks, so very nice. Unfortunately, under this magnification, you can see the white paint wasn't so great there. But you can see the silver window trim paint, and that looks pretty good. All right. So now that we're on the side here, on the back, it does seem legible, this Coupe de Ville text there. Yeah, it looks good. All right, the wire wheels, I guess that's as good as you can get. Whoa, what the F, man. That wheel is totally, well, that's too bad. Okay, mm, all right. Some silver paint here, mimicking probably a chrome piece along the bottom of the door, and chrome trim paint there. Yeah, this is questionable. The fenders are molded in. Yeah, it would have been nicer if they were separate pieces. And then you got the ghostly white headlights. Yeah, it's nice to see a license plate of some sort though. What does it say? RD Caddy? Rogue Caddy? I think it's an RD Caddy. It's a New York plate from 76. Okay, maybe rear drive caddy. All right, so might as well look at the engine. See, let's see if it's worth looking at. Hmm, so it's third Auto World, and the second time the hood doesn't really want to open. It's like a weird hinge where sometimes it doesn't want to open, but it will eventually happen. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of frustrating, right? I mean, I'm an adult. If this was, if I was a kid, I'd probably just break this by now. It's very annoying. So if you can't engineer a better hinge that's more like idiot proof, maybe you should just skip skip the whole opening feature cuz yeah, I can't get it. Ah, oh, boy. All right. Well, I'll just kind of hold it up there and See, it's like impossible to actually see the engine. So even if we could see it all, it's gonna probably be pretty lame. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's just all black in there. It's really hard to see a lot of detail. So uh, another case where I just think it'd be better off without that feature. One great thing is there's no panel gap here because it's literally ending at the plastic here. So this is actually one of the better opening hoods I've seen. It's not as bad as usual because the gap isn't visible there. Although it is pretty giant there. I mean, that panel gap has got to be like 1.5 or 2 millimeters wide. So that would be very large in the real world. 
Okay, well, alright, let's see about this side here. Hmm, whoa. There's not enough white there, it's too bad. And then, let's try to fix that tire there. Alright, that one's, okay, whoa. The white stripe on this tire is way, way off. It seems like it's almost on the bottom of the other surface there. Whereas here it's not so bad, so... Uh, yeah, that's the worst tire I've seen in the model world. Granted, I only have like, a few of these models. This one, um, that's also messed up. But this wheel is like totally pretty much falling off. The only thing that's keeping it in place is the, the little fender balance there. So, that's some QC problems, right? It's too bad. I don't know if I can glue that back. Unfortunately, because this base is riveted together, I can't fix it really easily. Right? It would have been great if this was screwed together. It's too bad. It also doesn't really say what the vehicle is. There's plenty of room on this bottom to print. You know, the year of the Cadillac, what model Cadillac it is. The exhaust tip here, it's alright. You know, it's pretty small. It's well done. Okay, can't ask for much more there. The back here, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, the Cadillac text is really good. The Cadillac badge is good. It's nice to see a license plate. Hmm. Unfortunately, this red on this side, this, this is really missing the mark. Here and here, it's quite level. The red here, the red there, the red there. But for some reason, this one's much lower, so that's not the best application of paint. And then also, you can just see the silver paint app was just got messed up. It's kind of a mess. This side's all right, though. Okay. So, well, I mean, I'm sure this is the best 164 scale Gen, Gen 4 Cadillac DeVille, Coupe DeVille. It's just, you know, it's definitely got some quality problems in this. You know, the hood doesn't open a lot. The paint is not very nice on two thirds of the top. That whole wheel is totally jacked up. And then some of the paint apps are pretty bad. It's questionable if this is accurate at all in that grill. It's not accurate to the photographs at least, so I don't know. I don't know. I mean I do like glow riders and I want to get you know one of these giant Cadillacs. So let's actually pull it up on the spin thing and compare it to a couple other uh, cars that maybe people will recognize in today. You don't see Cadillacs like this driving every day. So but you probably might see a, a modern Fiat 500. Granted this is a small car. And you might see one of the, you know, later uh, Volkswagen Beetles. This is a custom 3D wheel project, by the way. So that's why it looks the way it does. All right, so, it's actually a pretty low slung vehicle. Like the roof of it is quite low. Interesting, didn't expect that. And then if we go to the top view, yes, I think it's, expected that it would be super long, super big. The width of it though isn't actually that wide compared to modern vehicles. Modern vehicles have, have grown quite a lot in their girth there. Hmm. So that's interesting. Okay, well, anyways, uh, <laughs> I think it's a cool model just because it's a customized glow rider. I, I do hope that Auto World makes the 1979 version in pink because that's from Goodfellas, and there may have been another color in Goodfellas as well. But uh, unfortunately, I got some bad luck on this one. There's definitely, definitely some QC problems going on. But uh, the overall price of this isn't too bad, so I guess uh, I'm okay with it. It's not going to deter me from uh, trying out Auto World in the future, as long as they do some cool castings. So, Alright, well, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you around.